Martin from Telford College. I'm part of the apprenticeship team and I've got my colleague Katie with me here today. We're both Hello. part of the um, recruitment team for Telford College. So if you want to do an apprenticeship, it'll be us you come to, to speak to first to find out. So today we're just going to talk about the healthcare and the education roles that we have here with Telford College. So the apprenticeships you could potentially do with us from school or as I talked to you here before, you could come and do a college course first and then look at meeting with us after. So today we're just going to talk through um, what an apprenticeship is, talk about some of the sectors we offer where you could work. We'll meet some of the candidates who've progressed on from Telford College and from schools in their um, journeys. We'll look at some of the companies we work with in the role so you can get an idea of what you'd be doing in an apprenticeship. And then some next steps to support you of what you need to do and what you need to be looking for if you were considering an apprenticeship. So what is an apprenticeship? An apprenticeship is working full time for an established company whilst they're in your qualification. Um, so you can go to college first and you can do your qualification and um, childcare, all the sections we just heard about now, or you can look at coming into an apprenticeship where you're more hands on. And um, so you might be five days in the workplace, you're treated just like a normal member of staff there, you've got a contract, you've got 20% off the job training where you do um, extra learning, you're gaining skills, it's just all about that hands on experience and really working, being part of a team and doing the normal job that anybody would do whilst gaining your qualification. So let's have a little look at our healthcare apprenticeship that we offer here at Telford College. You're looking at approximately a 14 month apprenticeship. This will gain all your hands on experience while you're gaining that qualification, like Laura said. This can be in a range of different roles. So it can start in a care home um, out in just on the facility care where you're going home to home. We're looking for somebody that's really compassionate and caring and that you're willing to make a difference in someone's life. When you're caring for others, you need to have something about you that you're always thinking how you can help them and what you can do to better and support them. We also work really closely with um, nine different NHS trusts within Telford, Reakin, Shrewsbury, um, Shropshire. All these different roles, um, are, as you can imagine, are really busy at the moment with the COVID. So are taking on lots of apprentices right now. We have just placed somebody recently in... Um, in a supporting role in the plaster room. I'll go on to speak about her a little bit later, but these are all qualifications that are getting you a foot in the door in the NHS for starting your apprenticeship career there. And then we're gonna have a little look at some of the education roles. So we do early years education. So a really good thing to do um, with this would be to potentially come to Telford College and do a course here first. Um, and then like the tutor said previously, you get a bit of experience to know whether you wanna work with more the early years sector or whether you're looking at the teaching. Again, you might do a health and social route and then be interested in the care element. So with early years education, you're gonna be with the younger children from like birth to five. So you might be in a really young room with a little, little tiny babies, or you might be with um, five-year-olds getting them ready to go into school. You're gonna to wanna to be really patient and calm with this kind of role and nice and relaxed just for that nice environment. Teaching assistant, you're gonna go into a school, more primary or secondary school, a little bit more hands-on. You might do a little bit of SEN with companies. Again, you're just working full-time, you're actually in that environment. So instead of coming into college, you're, you're straight in, straight in at the workplace. So again, treated like a member of the team, expected to muck in everywhere. You're learning, you're on the job, you're actually dealing with children straight away instead of learning about it. You're getting that practical element and actually seeing firsthand and gaining all of those skills. So they're really, really good. They're hands-on, you're learning, you're earning a wage whilst you're doing them and you're gaining your qualification. So it's slightly just a different style of how to get a qualification and what route you could do. So we've done a couple of um, career progression examples just for you to see. Um, so this one we chose as a teaching assistant. So when you do first start your apprenticeship, you obviously are paid. So that might be the salary that you expect at the bottom there. It is slightly lower when you're on a first, um, when you first start an apprenticeship at £4.15 an hour. This is normal because you're obviously getting that qualification. You've got a low skill set. So in that first kind of year, you're building your skill set, you're building your experience. And then once you're after that first year, we kind of say a year of paying for a lifetime of gain. You've already got that experience if you're coming up. Um, if you've done three years and you're coming up against someone who's just left university doing teaching or something like that, you've already had three years hands-on experience in the workplace. So it's just another route for you, really. And you could look at going all the way through to a level seven, which is like degree level. So you don't have to go to uni if you want to do it. It is another route for you if you think you've come to college, you've enjoyed a course, right, I'm going to do an apprenticeship next. I'm going to work my way through all of those levels, get all of that experience and be being paid at the same time. And as you can see at the top, it's quite high progression. So it can be a really good salary and a really good 
step on the ladder to do an apprenticeship. This one's looking at more the NHS because they do all of their pay scales in bands. So you'd start on a year one, um, an apprenticeship wage of, like Laura said, the £4.15 an hour. And over years and more training that you gain during the NHS, you go up by bands. And this, as you can see here, is just a little snippet of what you can expect. So a couple of employees we've worked with this year in 2020 and you see a couple of the companies so we work constantly we've got a big team of people constantly working and contacting companies trying to get new opportunities so if you can come to us we've hopefully got lots of vacancies ready for you and um, to go in and help support you. I think as well with apprenticeships we always say it's about looking at the bigger picture you might just think oh, I don't want to go to a nursery and just work with younger children well that's going to be a footstep in the door you could work your way up you could go in all but side you could see what you could do so you could just start as a ta level two you could work your way up to a full qualified teacher a head teacher you could go into um special education needs nursing the care route again you could go into like midwifery there's loads of routes for you it's about seeing the bigger picture getting an understanding of what you kind of like and what you enjoy doing that qualification just in a different environment and it might be just the footstep and that step on the ladder to take you anywhere but even going into like the education sector we do apprenticeships in like customer service and admin so you might be interested in working with children but not directly with them or you could look at doing an apprenticeship in the business admin role so you're helping with reception you might still be working with children but just not directly teaching so there's loads of opportunities and loads of loads of things out there so it's just about thinking about that bigger picture so now we're going to go on to meet the apprentices I've got three um, different apprentices here that have got a little bit of a background story about them. So first I'm going to touch on is Sky. This is the one I mentioned a little bit earlier. Now Sky came to us and she completed a sports um, science here at Telford College. And then she decided that um, this wasn't really the route that she wanted to go down after, a, after finishing her qualification. It just wasn't for her. It wasn't what she wanted to do. And a position came up as a plaster room assistant at the Telford Hospital. And she applied for this and went through the whole recruitment process and has now kickstarted her career into the health care sector. Next, we go on to Georgina. She was at school. She had work experience in a nursery. She had babysitting and working at a local dance school. She got all this experience and then applied to become a teaching assistant. With all this experience on her CV, this made her stand out from all the other candidates. So she went on to progress into and secure a position as an early years role at Priorsley Academy. Then we go on to Leah. Leah was a school leaver. She came to me back at the beginning of the year, said that she was really passionate at working in a nursery. She went for a couple of interviews, didn't quite get the role that she wanted. Um, so I advised her when it was coming to September that I didn't want her to miss out, especially with COVID. Needed her to think of a plan B, maybe go to college and get a college course in childcare first, um, which she did. She took my advice, joined college, and then a couple of weeks into college, she then got an opportunity for another apprenticeship in a nursery, ABC Day Nursery, as you can see there. And she was offered the role, which she's absolutely delighted with. And she's really thankful now when she's transferred from her college course onto her apprenticeship. So me and Katie, it's a bit of a different to what you might do with an apprenticeship team. We work really closely with all of the students um, from Telford College and we offer, we don't just advertise jobs and you apply for them. We really, really help you like all the three examples you see here. We've really worked with them to help them with interviews, to talk to them, to talk to them more about roles and what they're interested in as well. And um, so that we are like a service, come and talk to us. If you're not sure what to do, we'll help you. We'll give you a plan B. If you have one interview and you're not successful, we don't just leave you. We'll keep working with you like Leah. We'll help you. We we supported her to getting onto our childcare course and having that backup plan. And we still worked with her to move them forwards. Um, so what are the expectations of an apprenticeship? What would we look for and advise you to kind of do if you were thinking of doing it? The first thing we say is grades. All apprenticeships you have to have a four in your English and maths. So just work really, really hard. I know your teachers and your family and your parents and your carers are probably all telling you that, but we're just going to reinforce you that and tell you that again. Work ethic, anything you can do now, just do it. Get added to your CV, work experience, volunteering, things like Duke of Edinburgh, sports, anything extra you can do to add to your CV. 
if you're going to come to college and you're going to do a childcare course, make sure you get the best industry placement, make sure you do work experience. Can you go and volunteer at a little school or something after school club or a dance club like Georgina did? I mean, she was in year 11 and she was so impressive when she came to us with her CV of what she'd done. She'd done nearly two years of teaching in her free time. So that really stood her out. And then when she went in front of an employee, they just they snapped her up straight away. So all of those things are just showing how committed and proactive you are and making you stand out for the crowd. So when you apply for a role, there might be a few of you applying. You've got to think about how you're going to make yourself better. Is that going to be your grades are higher? You've got better experience. You've got better references. All of those things build in making you a good candidate. Again, we'll support you with that. We'll talk to you. We'll do an interview with you to find out what you've got and try and help you improve your interview skills as well to make sure you do secure one with Telford College. So a couple of um, facts and questions we obviously get asked quite a few times because we can't be here to talk to you. So hopefully we can cover a few questions you might have. How many interviews will I have? Application process can be really quick. Sometimes it can take a while and you might stay on our talent pool for a while. We might work with you for a couple of months. We might give you a little bit of advice and guidance to go away and do and work on and then come back to us. Um, again, you, like any other interview, you might have apply for one have an interview not get offered the role and it might be quite a long process so it's quite hard to answer that question it's just based on you really and what you can do How can sorry I... i'm gonna to have to stop you there unfortunately no, you're fine. <laughs> got to the end of the time uh, there is a, a question in the q a box though so if you wanted yeah. to type the answer out to that in okay. the q a section that would be that would be great okay well pop my details if anybody does want any more information just give us an email or a call we're obviously on hand. brilliant thank you very much thank you